Hi, I'm Lorraine and I'll briefly explain this video demonstration of our research, simulating a personal rapid transit system in Second Life. As you can see, we have one loop and three vehicles in one station. This is based on the company Unimodel's concept of a possible PRT system powered by maglev. Unimodel felt that this concept is the way to go because it will have the minimum impact on the city that will be built on. Our simulation in Second Life was developed to identify possible usability problems in the concept system. Second Life is a massively multi-user environment that allows for many viewpoints of the simulation. One of the viewpoints is to use Mouse Look. Mouse Look allows you to view the vehicle as if you're riding inside it. This helped discover one of the usability problems. The view of the track passing overhead is uncomfortable and Unimodel realized that they'll need to redesign their vehicles to cover the track as it's passing. Secondly, this simulation showed that the vehicles will also need obstacle avoidance capabilities. There is no guarantee that once this track is developed and deployed in the real environment, that it will remain obstacle free. Trees are an obvious example. We were also able to spot engineering errors. We modeled this track using the equations that Unimoto would use to build a real physical track. We found that the original station was too small to fit one vehicle and that the part of the track that leads to and from the station didn't actually lead to the main track. Second Life was chosen because of its immersive environmental properties. What this means is that the simulation is experienced through the use of virtual avatars and that we have little control of the environment. The invisible parts of the simulation is logic control. The track is comprised of many pieces called bricks. As you may have noticed, there are numbers on top of the track and those are the brick IDs. Each brick has a sensor to detect when the vehicle is passed and sends this information back to the central station. We also deal with communication, lim communication limitations that are much like real life. Second life object communication is distance limited and subject to traffic problems. The modeling of the track is composed of more than 600 objects and each object is scripted to behave a certain way. It is literally object-oriented programming. Thankfully, we don't have to create each piece manually. We have one object that generates the whole simulation and that is also capable of resetting sim the simulation when we're finished. This is perhaps the most unique and best qualities about developing it in Second Life. We can take this generator in any part of Second Life and deploy it. After it is deployed, the simulation stays online even after us, the builders, sign off and anybody can come visit and use it, even when we're not around to show it off. I hope this brief video made you want to come visit us in Tech Coast on Second Life and ask more questions. Enjoy the rest of the video.